The Rise of Xi Jinping Xi Jinping was born in Beijing on the 15th of June 1953, the third child of Xi Jiangsun and his second wife Kai Xin. After the founding of the PRC in 1949, Xi's father held a series of positions, including party propaganda chief, vice premier, and vice chairperson of the National People's Congress. She had two older sisters, Kai Kao, born in 1949 and Annan, born in 1952. Jinping went to the Beijing Bai School in the 1960s. He became friends with Liu He, who, who later became China's vice premier and a close advisor to Xi after he became China's paramount leader. In 1963, when he was age 10, his father was purged from the CCP and sent to work in a factory in Luoyang. In May 1966, the Cultural Revolution cut short Xi's secondary education when all secondary classes were halted for students to criticize and fight their teachers. Student militants ransacked the Xi's family home. One of Xi's sisters committed suicide from the pressure. Later, his mother was forced to publicly denounce his father as he was paraded before a crowd as an enemy of the revolution. His father was later imprisoned in 1968 when she was aged 15 without the protection of his father. She was sent to work in Lianjia village in 1969 in Mao Zedong's Down to the Countryside movement. He worked as the party secretary of Lianjia, where he lived in a cave house. According to people who knew him, this experience led him to feel affinity with the rural poor. After a few months, unable to stand rural life, he ran away to Beijing. He was arrested during a crackdown on deserters from the countryside and sent to a work camp to dig ditches, but he later returned to the village. He then spent a total of seven years there. The misfortunes and suffering of his family in his early years hardened Xi's view of politics. During an interview in 2000, he said, People who have little contact with power, who are far from it, always see these things as mysterious and novel. But what I see is not just the superficial things, the power, the flowers, the glory, the applause. I see the bullpens and how people can blow hot and cold. I understand politics on a deeper level. The bullpens was a reference to Red Guard's detention houses during the Cultural Revolution. After seven rejections, she joined the Communist Youth League of China in 1971 on his eighth attempt after he befriended a local official. He reunited with his father in 1972 because of a family reunion ordered by Premier Zhu Enlai. From 1973, he applied to join the CCP ten times and was finally accepted on his tenth attempt in 1974. From 1975 to 1979, Zai studied chemical engineering at Tsinghua University as a worker peasant soldier student in Beijing. The engineering majors there spent about 15% of their time studying Marxism, Leninism, Maoism and 5% of their time doing farm work and learning from the People's Liberation Army. Early Political Career from 1979 to 1982, she was secretary for his father's former subordinate Zheng Bio, the then vice premier and secretary general of the CMC. In 1982, he was sent to Zhengding County in Hebei as deputy party secretary of Zhengding County. He was promoted in 1983 to secretary, becoming the top official of the county. She subsequently served in four provinces during his regional political career, Hebei, Fujian, Zhejiang, and Shanghai. She held posts in the Fuzhou Municipal Party Committee and became the president of the party school in Fuzhou in 1990. In 1997, he was named an alternate member of the 15th Central Committee of the CCP. However, of the 151 alternate members of the Central Committee elected at the 15th Party Congress, Xi received the lowest number of votes in favor, placing him last in the rankings of members, ostensibly due to his status as a princeling. From 1998 to 2002, she studied Marxist theory and ideological education in Tsinghua University, graduating with a doctorate in law and ideology in 2002. In 1999, he was promoted to the office of vice governor of Fujian and became governor a year later. In Fujian, she made efforts to attract investment from Taiwan and to strengthen the private sector of the provincial economy. In February 2000, he and then provincial party secretary Chen Minji were called before the top members of PSC, General Secretary Zhang Zemin, Premier Zhu Rongji, Vice President Hu Jintao and Discipline Inspection Secretary Wai Jiangxing to explain aspects of the Yuan Hua scandal. In 2002, she left Fujian and took up leading political positions in neighboring Zhejiang. He eventually took over as provincial party committee secretary after several months as acting governor, occupying a top provincial office for the first time in his career. In 2002, he was elected a full member of the 16th Central Committee, marking his ascension to the national stage. While in Zhejiang, she presided over reported growth rates averaging 14% per year. His career in Zhejiang was marked by a tough and straightforward stance against corrupt officials. This earned him a name in the national media and drew the attention of China's top leaders. Between 2004 and 2007, Lai Kang acted as Xi's chief of staff through his position as secretary general of the Zhejiang Party Committee, where they developed close mutual ties. Following the dismissal of Shanghai Party Secretary Chen Liangyu in September 2006 due to a social security fund scandal, she was transferred to Shanghai in March 2007, where he was the party secretary there for seven months. 
In Shanghai, she avoided controversy and was known for strictly observing party discipline. For example, Shanghai administrators attempted to earn favor with him by arranging a special train to shuttle him between Shanghai and Hangzhou for him to complete handing off his work to his successor as Zhejiang Party Secretary Zhao Hangzhou. However, she reportedly refused to take the train, citing a loosely enforced party regulation that stipulated that special trains can only be reserved for national leaders. While in Shanghai, he worked on preserving unity of the local party organization. He pledged there would be no purges during his administration, despite the fact many local officials were thought to have been implicated in the Chen Liangyu corruption scandal. On most issues, she largely echoed the line of the central leadership. Rise to power. She was appointed to the nine-man PSC at the 17th Party Congress in October 2007. He was ranked above Lai Keqing, an indication that he was going to succeed Hu Jintao as China's next leader. In addition, she also held the first secretary of the CCP's Central Secretariat. This assessment was further supported at the 11th National People's Congress in March 2008, when she was elected as vice president of the PRC. Following his elevation, she held a broad range of portfolios. He was put in charge of the comprehensive preparations for the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, as well as being the central government's leading figure in Hong Kong and Macau affairs. In addition, he also became the new president of the Central Party School of the CCP, its Cotter Training and Ideological Education Wing. In the wake of the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, she visited disaster areas in Shaanxi and Gansu. He made his first foreign trip as vice president to North Korea, Mongolia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Yemen from 17 to 25 June 2008. After the Olympics, she was assigned the post of committee chair for the preparations of the 60th anniversary celebrations of the founding of the PRC. He was also reportedly at the helm of a top-level CCP committee dubbed the 6521 Project which was charged with ensuring social stability during a series of politically sensitive anniversaries in 2009. She's position as the apparent successor to become the paramount leader was threatened with the rapid rise of Bo Zilai, the party secretary of Chongqing at the time. Bo was expected to join the PSC at the 18th Party Congress, with most expecting that he would try to eventually maneuver himself into replacing Xi. Bo's policies in Chongqing inspired imitations throughout China and received praise from Xi himself during Xi's visit to Chongqing in 2010. Records of praises from Xi were later erased after he became paramount leader. Bo's downfall would come with the Wang Lijin incident, which opened the door for Xi to come to power without challengers. She is considered one of the most successful members of the princelings, a quasi-clique of politicians who are descendants of early Chinese communist revolutionaries. Former Prime Minister of Singapore, Li Kuan Yew, when asked about Xi, said he felt he was a thoughtful man who has gone through many trials and tribulations. Li also commented, I would put him in the Nelson Mandela class of persons. A person with enormous emotional stability who does not allow his personal misfortunes or sufferings affect his judgment. In other words, he is impressive. Former U.S. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson described Xi as the kind of guy who knows how to get things over the goal line. Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said that she has sufficient reformist, party and military background to be very much his own man. Accession to the party leadership A few months before his ascendancy to the party leadership, she disappeared from official media coverage and cancelled meeting with foreign officials for several weeks beginning on 1 September 2012, causing rumors. He then reappeared on 15 September. On 15 November 2012, she was elected to the posts of General Secretary of the CCP and Chairman of the CMC by the 18th Central Committee of the CCP. This made him, informally, the paramount leader and the first to be born after the founding of the PRC. The following day she led the new lineup of the PSC onto the stage in their first public appearance. The PSC was reduced from 9 to 7, with only she and Lai Keqing retaining their seats. The other five members were knee in a marked departure from the common practice of Chinese leaders. Xi's first speech as general secretary was plainly worded and did not include any political slogans or mention his predecessors. She mentioned the aspirations of the average person, remarking, Our people expect better education, more stable jobs, better income, more reliable social security, medical care of a higher standard, more comfortable living conditions, and a more beautiful environment. She also vowed to tackle corruption at the highest levels, alluding that it would threaten the CCP's survival. He was reticent about far-reaching economic reforms. In December 2012, she visited Guangdong in his first trip outside Beijing since taking the party leadership. The overarching theme of the trip was to call for further economic reform and a strengthened military. She visited the statue of Deng Xiaoping and his trip was described as following in the footsteps of Deng's own southern trip in 1992, which provided the impetus for further economic reforms in China after conservative party leaders stalled many of Deng's reforms in the aftermath of the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest and massacre on his trip. She consistently alluded to his signature slogan, the Chinese dream. This dream can be said to be the dream of a strong nation. 
and for the military, it is a dream of a strong military, she told sailors. Xi's trip was significant in that he departed from the established convention of Chinese leaders' travel routines in multiple ways. Rather than dining out, she and his entourage ate regular hotel buffet. He traveled in a large van with his colleagues rather than a fleet of limousines, and did not restrict traffic on the parts of the highway he traveled. She was elected president on the 14th of March 2013, in a confirmation vote by the 12th National People's Congress in Beijing. He received 2,952 for, one vote against, and three abstentions. He replaced Hu Jintao, who retired after serving two terms. In his new capacity as president, on the 16th of March 2013 she expressed support for non-interference in China. Sri Lanka relations amid a United Nations Security Council vote to condemn that country over government abuses during the Sri Lankan civil war. On the 17th of March, she and his new ministers arranged a meeting with the chief executive of Hong Kong, Tsai Loon, confirming his support for Loon. Within hours of his election, she discussed cybersecurity and North